obedience, 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 obedience is a cornerstone of our faith in God. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. Being obedient requires faith in God. Without faith, it is impossible to walk with God. I will. Obedience. Obedience. Obey God. Hey y'all, it's Ashley. And Shantavia. And, and this, this is, is Obedience, Obedience Podcast. Podcast. So we'd like to welcome you guys to part two of our preparation series. So yes. in part one, we talked about um, Jesus' return and why we must be ready for his return and be prepared as well. Um, we also covered the definition of being prepared. We talked about the importance of being prepared and also the consequences of not being prepared. So if you haven't watched already, you already know the drill. Go back and watch part one. Okay, so you could be prepared for yes. part two. Come on, right. prepare it. So right. in this episode, we're going to talk about how you prepare. So if that little, you know, title of the episode got you guys a little caught off guard, incubation, because I know when I saw incubation, I was like, I automatically thought of being in an incubator. Um, and so it, it threw me off a little bit. But incubation just means that something is getting ready before it actually blooms. So um, we are going to go through the same parable again, but we're just going to talk about what should have been done instead of what was done. So in 25... One through three, it says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. So pastor, our our pastor, Dr. Vincent Robinson, um, in his message, which, you know, we will definitely link below. um, He says that, are you who you need to be for the things you desire? And, 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 you know, that, that really pointed out to me. And in 25, one through three, all 10 of those women wanted to be married, but only five of them were really ready to be married. The other five, they just wanted to be married. They just desired to be married, but they weren't actually prepared to be married. Yes, you can be better but not prepare it. Yeah. And also what you said, what Dr. B said, that thing really stuck with me, honey. And like doing our um, I- I3 Ki- Kingdom Business Summit, um, he also stated you can be ready but not prepared. Purpose and success demands a readiness. Mm-hmm. And readiness demands preparation. Um, So that, like I said, that stuck with me. Like I I realized that I had been ready for things in my life, but I wasn't prepared for things in my life. And that's such a difference. Mm. Why did I say it like that? But okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So before we get started, I want to read the definition of the incubation. Um, So it says to maintain something such as an embryo, or chemical active system under condition conditions favorable for hatching development keyword development or reaction to cause and or aid the development of incubation of an idea that thing that development period is something that we never want to go through it's hard um, and I also wanted to bring out the scripture, Proverbs 24 and 27. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Um, it says, prepare your works outside and get it ready for yourself in the field. Afterward, build your house and establish a home. So with all that being said, how important is the incubation phase in our preparedness? It's very important. Um, The incubation phase just, it resonated with me as like a season of single when it comes to wanting to be married. Mm -hmm. The season of single is very important. This is where you're learning about yourself. You're developing 
um, your likes, your dislikes, your needs and wants and whatnot, which are very important when it comes to, you know, being married. And even just to point out, uh, I know how it is to want to be married, to desire, and to be ready. But I had to realize for myself that I wasn't prepared for marriage. Right. It's such a hard thing to do. It's, it's a great thing, and it should be prepared for properly. Um, and I found, like, if you haven't listened to uh, <clears throat> the Matthew 6 and 33 study time, I encourage you to go back and listen where I pretty much talked about not being prepared for marriage. And I had to realize for myself, first of all, I need to know what marriage is. That's true. And we're not, we're not going to go into that, but. We're not. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other series. Uh-huh. It was a whole word. Y'all need to go check that out. Yeah. So we'll link it somewhere below, uh, up top or somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. In, in addition to marriage, school. You have to think the summer before school, that is your time in your incubation phase between one grade to another grade, between one um, community college to your university or your career, from your university to your career. It's, mm -hmm. it's a developing process there. With everything there's a process, therefore you need to be prepared in all situations. Oh, you forgot retirement too. You know we got to say. Oh yes. yes. Oh, oh, I oh, forgot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't have to work on for the rest of our life. I forgot about that point. Come on now, <laughs> Christina. What you said it just made me think of something. Like with school, every part of school is so important because it's getting us ready for the next phase of our life. Um, even, even from pre-K or if you guys went to, um, daycare, like that daycare taught you, you know, basic stuff, how to say your numbers, manners, how to have communication skills with other children. Then you went on to elementary school, middle school, prepared you for high school, high school, prepared you for college. And if you're going on to go to a professional career, college would prepare you for that professional career. And right. so we should like kind of create our lives how the government has created it. Just, in, just prepare for each stage of your life. So I'm glad you pointed that out. That's then, good. Cause if you don't get the kindergarten and pre, pre K phase, you're going to be kind of, you know, if you don't have a foundation, um, right. that's that's important. Important. say that foundation is important. Say that. Foundation is important. So if you, you messed up in, pre-k you know you're gonna have a little rough time in kindergarten and, mm -hmm. you know on and so forth so we have to set a good foundation mm -hmm. it's so hard to play catch up so hard to play catch up sure. so the incubation phase is so important because we're in that phase for a reason um i always like to say god may have told you this is the purpose for your life but he's holding that back from you right now because he knows you're not ready so if you never prepare to get where he wants you to go you'll never fulfill your complete purpose in life because you didn't do what you needed to do in that incubation phase um like i've always said like with the podcast with me and ashley like yeah we may not have a million viewers right now but we need to treat this thing like we got a lot of viewers because right one day it's going to happen and we need to be prepared for when it happens. So mm -hmm. yeah, our videos need to be top quality. Now we need to be consistent because when we get more viewers, consistency matters, you know, we need to be on top of our words. So once we do film, we're not like, um, you know, we know what we're talking about. Um, so I think that the incubation phase is so important because it determines how good you're going to be. And also right. if you're, um, well, if your desires come true, it's going to prepare you for that. Um, and, and, and that's going to be on the next part. So stay tuned guys. I don't want to get too much into that. You're getting excited. You're getting excited. Calm down girl. Yes. Um, <laughs> but another thing I wanted to mention with the importance of incubation phase to piggyback off what you guys said about marriage, like at that event that I talked about in the last, um, in the first part that happened at our church, like, it really made me sit there and be like, okay, so the things that you have written down on your list that you want in a man, 
can you complete those things that you expect him to complete? And I was like, Ooh, Say that. I need to work on myself. Like, how dare I say I want somebody that's making 60 K and I'm not making it yet, you know? Um, or I want somebody who's patient and, you know, I pop off real quick on them. Like, how right. dare I? So you just, you have to work on yourself. And so that's why I think the incubation phase is so important. Like you said, a lot of people say your single season is your best season of your life. And I mean, we just need to live in it. We need to figure out why yep. it's so important. Because, mm-hmm. and another thing with, especially with marriage, like if you rush into something and you're married and you have children and it doesn't work because you rushed into it, now you're putting this whole thing on your children that they're going to have mm-hmm. And then other people are affected by your lack of pepper, preparation. Pepper, yes. Preparation? It's I like said preparation, like a sprinkle of pepper. It's like a domino effect. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why it's so important. And I'm glad you po- you pointed out the fact of, like, with the podcast, we have to prepare. And Pastor V also stated something like, you can't do your practice on stage. Like, just think like if we didn't prepare like this outline, we didn't have like scriptures already, we didn't study, how we can't just come on and just talk about the topic, you know what I'm yeah, saying? That's so true. Because baby, gonna I do it so quick. And yeah. oh, I got an example. He going he gonna be real mad at me, but I'm sorry. We talked about it already. But my cousin, King James Jr., I'll link his video up here. Um he did his first little public speaking thing after he mimed because he's he's a mime mimer i don't know how you but that's what he does and so they don't talk y'all they just dance and this was his first time because he had a word it was a good word i knew what he was trying to say but it just wasn't coming out and i was looking around i was just like oh this is so cringy and i knew what he was trying to say it was y'all he had an example in the middle of it and (laughs) (laughs) Then <laughs> they say, let them let them use your baby. Let them use it. Yeah, it was a lot of those. Mm, okay. <laughs> but it was so crazy. Like he had got this um this long rope. He had like, can I get a volunteer for tug of war? And like it took forever for people to volunteer. Aww. And then and then when they did volunteer, the teams were off and it was just so much. And it was like, okay, we need to. I know what you're trying to say, and then the little, they played tug of war, and then the little boy fell, hurt himself on a pew, and it was it was a lot, and I knew what he was trying to say, but for people who didn't know what he was trying to say, it looked like a lot was going on with nothing, no substance coming out of it, and so it was kind of like, hey, next time, I know you want it to be like super authentic. But next time, I think that you need to practice, you know, write down what you want to say, act out your, your, um, what is it? Act out your example, already know how many you need. Um, maybe next time don't even ask for examples. Just say, Hey, you come up, you know, just practice in front of people to make yourself comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, especially so cool. something like that. But yeah, that's a good example because I would never forget. Like I was doing a video to put on social media. It wasn't for the podcast, anything is for church. Mm-hmm. And I grew so like overwhelmed because I didn't have like what I needed. I just, I just felt sometimes I feel like the preparation stage is not needed, and that's not that's not right, Ash. You gotta get yourself together. Okay, but that was self motivation for me. But anywho. <laughs> I wanted to just come on and say, you know, it's going to be like a short 30 second video. So why should I have to prepare? And I was so overwhelmed. And it took Jeremy to just like, sit down, sit down, sit me down and be like, what are you trying to say? Practice it, write it down. And it, I was embarrassed because I was just like, it's a 30 second video. Why should I have to prepare? But even in the small things you have to prepare. Yes. That's Even if it's like five minutes, just take your time and get yourself together and prepare. They say practice yeah. makes perfect for a reason. That's yeah. Because it's so true. And, and we can see it. Even if we take it outside and we go to the secular world, like we all know how Beyonce practices. And when we see her performances, you can tell 
you can you can tell like okay she been, she's been practicing this she knows yeah. it backwards and forward and that preparation is what makes that show so good you know that dedication mm-hmm. too so yeah you see the dedication mm-hmm. and i also think like from reading this scripture i think of like i don't know why in my bible it, it, it talked about you know and it used the analogy of a farmer um and then plowing and taking up roots and weeding and i also thought about as applying it to like practical in real life you know sometimes in our preparation season like we talk about marriage and performing you know there's some uprooting there's some weeding that we have to do in our life and yes just like distractions from our life we have to take those things out you know i can't spend a lot of time on social media you know stuff like that right that's but there are some practical things that we can do in the preparation season and apply it to the scripture. Um, and I also think when I thought about that, like uprooting and unplowing those things, I think of you can't put seeds in bad ground and expect it to grow. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, but I, I thank you, Lord, and expect it to flourish. You put in the, a watermelon seed up in some sand and you expect it to grow. Ooh, that's so good. You gotta have the right soul. Right. Um, and I was just thinking, like, just applying it to a spiritual aspect as well. Um, so what are some things that you can do? And I put down just asking myself, you know, where's my mind? Is my mental health am I mentally fit to mm. and prepared to do those things? And also doing like heart checks. Of, is my heart in the right place? Am I doing why am I doing this? What is the reasons? that I want these desires. Is it from God or is this be, me being prideful or selfish or just, you know, setting on the people on the gram, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just doing That's that true. kind of health, heart check and also asking yourself, where, where is your faith level at with this? Are you capable and prepared to receive what you truly desire? So. And then trusting him during that time of waiting is very important because Um, I had to realize, and this is something that, you know, of course we know, and, um, but sometimes it's good to be reminded that if God says something, God's not like man, God's not like you and me, that, you know, we may lie, but if he said that it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Right. So, um, be prepared and do what you have to do. Um, so yeah, just being ready and trusting that it's going to happen. And I know that if he said that this is going to happen, I know there's something right now I need to be doing. Um, and that, that also goes in being still in what he said, you gotta be still. Um, and I'm sure there's other stuff that we can be working on other than, you know, saying, Hey, Hey God, you remember, you remember what you said, you know, just waiting on you. (laughs) You know, he gives us a a task and a purpose for our lives. We got stuff we can be doing too. Let let God do what he, what he's going to do. That made me think of what Pastor V said. Oh, this was a long time ago, um, Ashley. But do you remember when he was like, okay, you keep asking God for something and you're not seeing it? Revisit the last thing he told you to do. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like he already told you to do something. Revisit that one. You can't be disobedient and expect so much. Mm-hmm. Yes. Whew. And Christine, you brought up a good point of just being reminded of his word and his promises, girl, in your waiting season, in your incubation. So sometimes you just have to be like, all right, now, you know, don't feel like what you said, you say it, but you have to be so reminded on his word and kind of just cling to those scriptures. And my favorite song right now is A Man of Your Word by, who is this? Chandler Moore and some other people. If you want me to sing it, I can. No, wait. Because I held my song in, so. <laughs> you should hold things in. You have to be obedient to the spirit. Man of your word. Because you're a man of your word. If you sell it, I believe it. Hey, hey. Okay. I ain't going to give y'all too much because I'm going to have to charge y'all. Okay. 
Okay, so when I thought about incubation, I thought about an egg, you know, and <laughs> you know the mother, the mother hen sits on the egg, and inside the egg, a lot of stuff is going on that we don't get to see. Oh, I feel it. Hold on, let me see. I'm coming somewhere. Inside the egg, so much is going on. Okay, that we don't get to see. But yeah. we know that there is an expected end for that egg. Yes. That's so, good. That is good. That's good. We talk- Say that expected end again because I, I felt that thing right there. There's an expected end for the egg. There's an expected end for you. Mm-hmm. So. And there's yeah. life after, after the egg. That's true. Amen. New life. A new type of life. Mm-hmm. Come on now. Because you know that chicken or that hen, they sit on that egg the whole time. That egg is in darkness. Right. That part. That part. In <laughs> darkness. In darkness. And the the egg is all misshapen and uh and gelatinous and not anything. And then the egg, the mother hen is just just doing what they got to do. And the egg got to sit there and do what it's got to do. Mm-hmm. It got to develop. And we have to do what we got to do and be that egg. Because the egg can't move. The egg is being still. The egg can go anywhere. The egg is depending on its mother to take yeah. care of them and to make sure that they are prepared for the next step. All right. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, but I'm That's again. Mm-mm. Right. That's Just be still. And you that's a good point of being still in the season. It doesn't mean just sitting here, all right. You know, you say something gonna happen, so I'm just that's waiting for something to happen. Oh yeah. It doesn't mean just sitting there and doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I hope that somebody realizes that. And you have to be also being prepared and being knowledgeable and still standing in faith um, right. that it's still going to happen. So it doesn't just say, you know, I'm just going to be still and wait on God. No, even in your being still season, you're waiting, you're rejoicing, you're being knowledgeable of his scripture and being reminded of his word and standing in faith in the things that, you know, you guys desire and what you're right. preparing for. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Laying the egg. Come on, the egg might not look like it's doing much. It's just laying there, mm. being still. But on the inside of that egg, a lot is working. A mm. lot is going on. So in your being still, like Ashley said, you're working. Yes. You're praising. You're doing what you have to do. And trusting that mama hen, hashtag Jesus. Hashtag Holy Spirit, hashtag God. They taking care of us. Yeah, period. Yeah. That's so he good. is our father. He is responsible for us. So right. Just be reminded of that. I need a break. Cute shout music. <laughs> Think about it as a pregnant woman. They're pregnant for nine months. Okay. We have no idea what's going on in that belly and we can't see it. That's true, but we know. Yeah, and that baby is dependent. Like, that baby is literally connected to its mother through the umbilical right. cord. It's dependent on it. If that umbilical cord gets unattached from the mom, that child is done. So, even if they don't get that egg example, just think of it like a child. Yep, we got to stay connected to our, our father. That's yeah. how we get the truth. Because when we get disconnected, like the umbilical cord, we go into darkness, Ooh. just like the whole baby. Malnourished. Yes, that part. So good. Don't be a, no, a malnourished Christian. Oh. Uh, what? That's so good. That it's is so good. true, though, because if that you are malnourished, you see it, man. You see it in your faith. You see it in your walk. You don't shine no more, you know? Yeah. You just you going to church. Go. I'm just yeah. going to church. I'm just going to Bible study. I'm just listening to my praise and worship, but nothing. Nothing's wow. feeding me. Nothing's feeding me. That's man. That's good. 
That's good. I don't know what y'all are <laughs> So with being still, like you talked about, Christina, with that with the hen or that egg, I should say, it's the the hen has to sit there and wait until her egg has completely developed. So I wanted to talk about that patience th- during our incubation phase. So in twenty five and five. It actually says the bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Now for the five wise bride bridesmaids, they were good. They could take a nap. You know, they did what they had to do, but the other five unwise women, they didn't need to nap. They needed to get up and prepare, go buy some more oil because the bridegroom was going to be a long time to come. And with our our execution, which is part three, stay tuned, guys. Our execution phase some kind sometimes can take longer than we think, and we can start to become a little impatient. So I wanted us to talk about how we can be patient during that incubation phase. Um, and we actually post this question on our Facebook page. Um, like mentioned in part one, you guys should follow us on our Facebook page at obedience pod and also follow us on all of our other social medias at obediencepodcast.com. And want to go ahead and throw this out there too. If you guys ever need to ask a question or have a prayer request, you can email us at obediencepodcast at gmail.com. I think I covered everything. Good job. <laughs> So Shamiko Barron, friend of the show, hey, is getting ready and sowing seeds to where you want to be, preparing for the next job, relationship, and business. And I really wanted to point hers out because you need to be prepared in all areas of your life. And that's what she said. Like, yeah, you may be focused on this one goal, but there's something else that you need to prepare for too. You don't want to get where you need to be and only be prepared in that one area and then this whole other part of your, your mental or your attitude or your personality is like completely undeveloped. Jacqueline Riley says, stay focused and trust God's process. Carmen Williams says, pray and watch God change things. Andriana Johnson Bush says, be still in your spirit and wait in expectation, but move in silence. And always pray and be led by the spirit. Mm-hmm. That that one was good. By the yeah. spirit, not yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because sometimes in our waiting season, we can just be waiting and not even have that faith, like you said, Ashley, not have that faith anymore. So we need to wait in expectation. Know that what God promised us is gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So that's why that one was good. And then I move in silence. That one is so good. I know um, this past, well, last weekend, I was talking to my family, my own, sometimes it'd be your own family, but I was talking to them. I was telling them, I was like, yeah, I'm, I, I really want to go ahead and work towards like living by myself, living in an apartment. And my cousin was like, you might as well just get a house. First of all, that's not what I said. I said, I want to stay in an apartment. Why are you trying to make me get a house? I'm not ready for that yet. <laughs> But, you know, you can't tell everybody what you want because somebody sure. will shoot down your dreams or, like, mm-hmm. make their dreams seem so minimal. And it's like, hey, this is a big deal to me. You're talking about getting a house. <laughs> Let me go through my correct seasons. So, yeah, like, if the Lord has a house for me, that is great. But that is not what I'm looking at right now. Mm-hmm. So move in silence, y'all. Know who you can tell stuff and know who you can't tell stuff. That's true. Then pray. And then be led by the spirit. That's the best that part. one. That part. That is the best one. If y'all don't know, that's my Amy. Hey, Amy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for you guys, like, what are some tips that you have to give our viewers on what they should do to remain patient during that incubation phase and also some things that they should do in their waiting season instead of just sitting there and waiting? The first one I have is hone your skills. So work on whatever it is that you're trying to get to. So, you know, like we mentioned before with the podcast, 
um, yeah, we may get to a million viewers one day if that's what God has for us, but we also need to be prepared to speak in front of a hundred million viewers, you know, so we have to work on that skill. Um, I think, I think patience too. I think God has been testing me with my patience, um, during this season to prepare me for, um, when we get into those bigger audiences, cause he wants, he wants me to be able to work with certain people and I have to learn my patience. So he's been, he's been working with me in that area. Um, and then just knowing, resting on the fact that your time is not always God time and God time is the best time. So those are mine. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. I I definitely think, uh, like we pointed out, you're just now waiting and waiting and waiting on God during the waiting season. Um, You're not waiting on just something to fall out the air, but you also should be like also sharpening your skills, um, whether it be like speaking to someone. Like I know for myself, I I can work on how I speak and how I come across like through video and like just kind of crafting how to explain certain things um sometimes i can just talk to myself in the mirror and you know work on that um also like you said having patience and growing your faith through scripture um and also i also have delight yourself in the lord and i just wanted to read psalms 37 and 4 and it reads take delight in the lord and he will give you your heart's desires And I also wanted to read an insert from my Bible, and it reads, David has called us to take delight in the Lord and commit everything we have and to do to him. But how do we do this? To delight in someone means to experience a great pleasure and joy in his presence. This happens only when we know that the person will. Thus, to delight in the Lord, we must know him better knowledge of god's great love for us will indeed give us delight so what i got from that just to you know extend your knowledge in god and just to delight yourself in him and to get to know him and to commit to him and like i said just to expand your knowledge of him and in that he will give you those heart's desires so that's what i got you didn't gave me my um scripture for the month of July to lean on. Thank you very much. When acceptable to share your good news, surrounding yourself with people that can encourage you mm-hmm. will definitely keep you patient and keep you uplifted because being patient gets kind of hard sometimes. But when you have those um spiritual friends that know what thus said the Lord, they can help you remain steadfast in your waiting and you being still and waiting on God to do what he said he was going to do because we know he's going to do. Yeah. That makes me think if we go back to like the season of singleness, you may need to get you some single friends because the married friends, they be putting you through <laughs> Putting yeah. through it, like going on vacations. Oh, I gotta go home to my husband. Like, dang, I gotta go home. <laughs> You're that right. can't be real hard, but you got a group of single friends. Y'all can go out. You forget you single because you got these friends who you can hang out with. So, yeah, that's true. What you said. Mm-hmm. That's good. Oh, Ashley, I wanted to point out something you said. I wrote it down. I think that's so good in knowing, okay, yeah, God gave me this gift, but that doesn't mean the gift is a hundred percent perfect. Like we have to be able to acknowledge our flaws and work towards correcting our flaws. And everybody has flaws. It's not just one person. Like everybody is not perfect. So always consistently work on what you can do to be better. Like it may not be speaking. It may be like, you need to do a better job at preparing for this episode or you need to review your scriptures before the episode. Like it can be something that you don't even think about. Mm -hmm. So I think that if, if you're working with somebody definitely and you can point out one of their flaws, be ready to point out one of your flaws too. Wow. 
And that can be so hard when like looking at yourself in the mirror. I am talking about the man in the mirror. Okay. Uh, <laughs> when looking at yourself and like looking at those flaws, don't nobody want to do that for real, but it's so necessary for this. This, In order for you to develop, you have to see your flaws and where you're not, what's the word I'm looking for? Where you're not prepared or where you lack. Yeah, so. yeah. You can develop yourself in that area to be all you need to be. It just takes work and practice. Like singers go to, um, what is it? Training. Vocal, tra- like vocal training. Yeah. Yeah. They go to vocal training. They don't just wake up and, you know, they're Aretha Franklin all the time. They <laughs> <have to learn. laughs> That's true. And you would, just going back to what you said about um, relationships and not taking care of one thing, you would hate to take that into the next level or let's say you were bad in math in um 11th grade now you're taking it to 12th grade you know handle this now let's work on this now yeah right that's what that summer school is for yeah they right. told you that in 11th grade for a reason because you was gonna need it in 12th grade so yeah. don't just think oh i don't need it mm. mm-hmm. i'll worry about it later <laughs> then when later get here ooh. I should have did this. I should have did that. They said it was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Like with them student loans, they told me I was going to have to pay. Oh. <laughs> now, why are you bringing it up? Why are you saying Right. I'm triggered. Like <laughs> I- I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> um, actually, what we were just talking about is a great segue into, into the next topic. Um, so, being prepared in one area and not being prepared in the other. Um, is what we were talking about. And, you know, our great pastor, Dr. Vincent Robinson, he brought up the 80-20 rule in his scripture. And how he broke it down, he, he talked about, like, at the gym. You go to the gym, and all you do is your upper body. That's all you work on. And then, you know, you're going to have some chicken legs, and you're going to look real. Yeah. <laughs> going to be a BMW, your body made yeah. wrong, babe. It's just wrong. <laughs> Wobbly. <laughs> And so he talked about how you need to do that full body workout so you can look completely good all over your body and not and not in just one area. So I wanted to talk about that 80-20 rule. But my question is, as it pertains to life or school, how do you believe we should prepare to make sure we have that full body workout, to make sure we have that 80-20 rule and set, set in place? To be completely hot, honest, open, and transparent on tonight. So, I will say that I do struggle with that because I know that God told me this is a preparation season of my life. And I think we're always preparing, but to really focus on preparing for them some things. And when I thought about that, I got, to be honest, I got overwhelmed because I'm like, I have all these desires, but what do I focus on? And when I thought about the 80-20, it's okay to like work on, for me, it's best for me to focus on one thing at a time because I get overwhelmed kind of easily. And just thinking about that, how I can apply that to my life, I can say, okay, this week or this night or tonight, I'll focus on this desire. And on to, in the morning, you know, I may study something else or maybe like spend two days on this and the other two days on that and kind of like incorporate everything into my life, mm-hmm. you know, just so nothing goes lacking and I don't forget about the other desires as well. So mm-hmm. kind of like focus on the first couple of things at mm-hmm. the beginning of the week and then kind of switch it around. That's good. Cause I definitely, I tend to be the one, like I'll get all these ideas and I try to do them all then. And then I get so overwhelmed. And I'm like, I get burnt out and I don't work on anything at all. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So I I've that. learned. I know, like, I probably mentioned in the quarantine and chill episode that we will have, like, a blog coming out soon. But I realized I was just overwhelming myself. Like, that was too much for me to work on. Like, get the podcast off the ground and then focus on that. You know, you got the idea. So just prepare to get that idea completed and then you'll you can come back to it like life is not just 10 years like you can live for 70 years so everything doesn't have to be done at once 
Ooh, now you said a word when you said that. <laughs> and I think a lot of people realize when God gives you an idea or like a something to do, it doesn't mean all the times I'll say all the times, it doesn't mean that you have to go and do it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's okay to take the preparation stage and be like, okay, God, I you know you told me to do this and okay. Show me what you want me to do next. It's okay to have that moment of like, okay, let me step back and tell God told me to do it, but I don't want to, you know, you don't want to go out and do it and be like, oh, God told me to do this and then not be prepared because it kind of makes God look bad if, you know, you haven't prepared it, you know, and then you don't want to go into a world and be like, of people that don't know him and be like, God, means to, God told me to do this. You know, he told you to go out there and get a car, but your credit is kind of bad, but I'm just using it as an example. You're right. You're right. Um, you know, you, you just don't want to go out and do that and then give that bad narrative on God to other people. I don't know if that makes sense. but okay. makes sense. No, you know, and I had never thought about it that way. Um, you know, they say you get a word from God and you just, you just go. Um, but and I'm not saying that's all the time. I'm just saying. Oh, like, right, right, so- right. But no, when I get the word, I'm like, all right, what's next? Mm-hmm. Because I'm so scared of slow obedience being disobedient, and I don't, and I, and I don't want to do that. You know, you don't want to do that. So, um, but there is a time frame for everything. Just because God's given, you know, that word, it doesn't mean that you got to do it. That it's meant to be done right then. That's mm-hmm. what's up. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, because there's a list of things that you know we, me and God, spend. Uh, a morning together and you know, right. we just write out everything that you desire and if I was to go and do all of those things right now you know I would go out looking like a fool because I haven't prepared for those things right. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I mean everything requires preparation guys so. and that's when you get humble because you're gonna have to be like all right you told me to do it but I didn't I didn't ask when you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you fix it please Jesus? you know <laughs> so when it came to school, because, you know, I work at a, a college and I was like, well, when you are preparing for school, what do you what do you need to do? And I was like, one thing I messed up about doing is not talking to my advisor about, you know, different things. Um, I know that I thought that I could handle making my schedule by myself. And I didn't realize that classes were offered, they were offered every other year, which was pushing back my graduation date, you know. So not talking to the right people, not doing my research on the dorms or the professors or clubs and organizations and the majors and whatnot, Mm -hmm. you know. So that is so very true. For all my my, um, freshmen or seniors in high school, do the research do not be afraid to reach out um because i say all the time like i don't think that my high school counselor did a great job in preparing us for everything that college was because i knew about the basic majors you know i want to be a teacher i want to be a doctor i want to be a lawyer and none of those like resonated with me i was like i don't know what i want to do i just i want to go to college and if i had known the the vast amount of majors that were out there like I would have learned of one thing that I always say I like I would have learned about accounting earlier than I probably could have been an accountant but you know that wasn't God's will for my life so I'm not going to dwell on it for too long um but definitely feel okay to over research there's nothing wrong with that and I know like for me I just started keto this week and I, 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 it took me a while to start it because, you know, I, I just heard of so many restrictions and I'm not, I'm not a restricted kind of person. I don't like restrictions. Okay. <laughs> but as I like began to research and like look at the meal plans, I was just like, I can have a pizza casserole. I can have, ch- I can have dessert. And I began to, I began to prepare the thing. And I was just like, I think I'm like this. Yeah. And um, I can have my coffee too, you know, I can have a cream and what stuff, stuff like that. And one thing that you have to do is prepare. You have to prepare your meals first because yes. if you don't, you would have been ate, you know, the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Would have been knocked off course. 
So one thing you said, Christina, too, I wanted to point out, um, like you were talking about, um, because you didn't listen to your advisors, your graduation date just kept moving back. Um, but I have something written down too, where it says, don't be a stickler to deadlines. Like things will happen. Um, yes. and sometimes deadlines are necessary. You never know what God has for you. He may have wanted you to graduate in this year because the perfect job was going to be available this year. Amen. That's it. <laughs> That's work. So Seriously. we have to be okay when things don't happen at the time that we think that it's going to happen. Because we, remember, we have to live life. Your will, not mine. We have to continue to live our life like that. So if you don't make your deadline, be okay with it because it's a reason you didn't make that deadline and you're going to love that reason. I just don't know what it is right now. But trust me, when you find out, you're going to be like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank right. you. So, yeah. That's what it is. So what are some tips that you guys would share with our viewers on being prepared? I have a long list. Um, because you know, my first option is make, mm-hmm. a, make a list. That's my first thing on my list. Okay. <laughs> if y'all don't know me, I love myself a list mm-hmm. and it just brings me so much satisf- satisfaction to check that little box okay. on my list. Mm-hmm. So definitely with being prepared, you need to know what needs to be done. Because right. if you just throw yourself into something and you don't know what needs to be done, you're going to miss something. And that something may be something that's really important that you need it and you missed it. So definitely make a list. Um, I know I put the simplest things. Sometimes I will put make a list on my list. Um, that's just how I am. But like, I, like in the beginning stages, like me and Ashley, we used to always forget to make thumbnails. I literally had to make a list of, okay, this is what we need to do. Thumbnail checked. So you don't miss anything. And that's how I do at work. And that's how I do it life. Like I, on my little expo board, I have a list of stuff I need to get done. I just work off list. That's, that's me and my organization skills list. Mm-hmm. My therapist kind of told me that I probably need to stop, but she don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> uh-uh. You know, she don't know you like that. So no. No. You don't even know me like that. Mm -hmm. what your final goal is research what you need to do in order to get there so like i know with the podcast before we started our first episode how it was like two months before we even did the first episode because we were doing a bunch of preparation work like okay how do i write this episode Mm -hmm. okay how do i get this episode out okay let me make these facebook i mean these social media pages it's it's, take you like y'all said before, God may give you a vision, but you still need to do the preparation work so that vision looks like God. And also setting goals and letting your goals be smart. I think we all have heard of this analogy, making your goals smart. And it's an acronym for being specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So I think it, you also have to make goals for yourself. And also, when making goals, extend yourself some grace. Just in case you don't get it done at the time that you want it to be done, or it's not as perfect and then you're a perfectionist, extend some grace to yourself, honey. You can you can still work on that thing. So that would be my tips. You also have to have confidence in yourself and stay encouraged. That That's very important because it's you're being patient, you're staying organized, and sometimes that can be a little, you know, extra for me. And um, I have to remain in a good head space mm-hmm. when I'm trying to be prepared. Yeah. And having those people to hold me accountable is important too. Accountability partners. Yes. You, say them. you said a word then. And to, and to piggyback off what you said with um, being confident, right. um, building your confidence is you, you know, working on yourself. You may, if you have something that you're not really proud of, um, then maybe, hey, you need to work out. Or, hey, maybe you need to figure out this skincare routine to get your skin clear. You want your hair to grow. You know, work on things that will grow your confidence. 
um, promote the skills that you already have. You know, like God gave you this skill. I don't want to say singing again. Um, this skill to do hair. Um, make work on your cousins. You know, charge them free. It may not be time for you to charge people yet. Right. <laughs> you need to practice a little bit, then you can charge people. So yeah, definitely work on your confidence because you know a confident person will make you want to support them. That's true. And then I know my favorite line at work. I even had one of my mentees be like. I never knew that whenever I don't know something, my favorite go-to is, you know, that is done so many different ways. Let me do a little research to figure out what's the best way for you. I like that. I like that. (laughs) I I always thought that you were trying to figure out the best way. No, I'm trying to figure out how to do it because I have no (laughs) idea. that confidence though like you said <laughs> right mm-hmm. people can tell when you're not confident i don't know what it is it, people can tell i don't know if it's the look down or the the being a little timid people can mm-hmm. tell. so build your confidence up and build your confidence up in the lord yes and that lack of confidence can lead you to doubting and doubting yourself and doubting god and we know that you can do it because God didn't didn't tell it to you because you couldn't do it. Like you said. So what God has for me, it is for me. We gotta have confidence and, and God Godfidence. Say that somewhere. Yeah. Confidence. And he's equipped you for the things that he has called you to do. This whole episode has been good. It, I be. it is time to wrap it up because I mean I feel like we've told you guys everything that you can do in order to prepare like it's nothing else left right you guys right. it's nothing else left so we might as well go ahead and transition into the next episode where we're going to talk about the execution phase so whenever you're ready to actually reveal what you've been preparing for um, but in that part of the episode christina will be leaving us so we definitely want to go ahead and thank you so much for everything you. that you have given us this episode, because you have given it. <laughs> I mean, all of it. That's Thank my God. thought, so. This has been a, this has been a great experience. We gotta have you again, because this was fun. I agree. So definitely, when we can all get in person, this is gonna happen again. And yes, if y'all didn't know, she came up with this series, and it has really blessed me, and it was at a perfect time. To Amen. Me. Amen. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for being obedient, because I'm pretty sure you were given that from God. Yeah. And you were oh, yeah. Obedient. Most yeah. definitely. So everybody give Christina a round of applause. Comment down below. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the episode. Yes. <laughs> All right. So guys, be sure to come back. Same time next week, we're going to talk about execution. Um, and we will be joined by Dr. Jamila Riley. Um, so you want to hear that so come on back and as always be obedient we'll see you guys next time